Hi, it's Laura at Aquamarine 18 Tarot and Books. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. Welcome. This is VR2 Chanel over at Chanel Days who started the mid-year tarot tag. I believe that she started this last year and then reworked the prompts a bit for this year. So I'll be using the 2024 prompts, but I will list both of her videos with links in the description box below. This is a mid-year kind of check-in based on a booktube tag. So I will also list the prompts with timestamps as always. I'm mostly going to be sharing and featuring and focusing on decks that I've received in 2024, but a few questions, including the first question, that will not be the case. So prompt number one is deck you've used the most so far in 2024. I didn't actually count the number of readings, though that is something that I could theoretically count if I wanted to, but I'm pretty sure that there are two contenders for this most used in 2024, and that would be Marseille Prendre V and the Diverse Tarot de Marseille. I've been doing a fair amount of Marseille reading, and so these two have been getting a lot of use. I took the Diverse Tarot de Marseille to readers with me. I worked with the Marseille Prendre Vie through a five-week tarot class, so I have been enjoying both of these decks in 2024 so far. Both of these are decks that I got in 2023. This was a very nice gift from my friend, and this is a Kickstarter deck. So these are just two fantastic uh, Marseille decks that are really fun to use and that I have been using, I would say, the most over the course of 2024. I am really liking both of these. And I also got a t-shirt in the in the Marseille Prendre V campaign, which gets a lot of compliments. Uh, half my coworkers want that t-shirt. So that's the that's also the deck that I have worn the most this year is Marseille Prendre V. The second prompt is a new deck that came into your collection. Now there's a number of decks that are new to my collection this year that I'll be showing in this video. I tried to not repeat decks from different prompts too, too much. So for a new deck that came into my collection, I chose the newest deck to my collection, and that is the Magical Nature Tarot. This is not a deck that was newly created in 2024. This has been out for a little while now, and it's been kind of on my, my wish list it is made in the Eco Herbage cardstock. Um, it is a really cool, environmentally friendly stock with environmentally friendly ink. And there's some, you know, dyeing using dyes that the artist made in this deck. Really cool kind of collage style. Smithwaite based deck and it just joined my collection recently. So I am really enjoying using this deck. I feel like, you know, there's a good chance that by the end of the year 2024, this could be a contender for most used this year, but it definitely is not my most used this year so far because I just haven't had it very long. So that is the Magical Nature Tarot. The next prompt is the most anticipated deck that was released this year. And this is one that I have no doubt is in other people's mid-year tarot tag as well, because I know I was highly anticipating it. And that is the Gay Marseille by Charlie Claire Burgess. There seems to be a bit of a theme <laughs> to my VR thus far. This is a contemporary Terra de Marseille. It has some extra cards, which are there. And I backed this one on Kickstarter. Charlie Claire Burgess is one of my favorite 
deck creators. I have their fifth spirit tarot as well, and I knew I wanted to get this one. I am really looking forward to their playing card based oracle that they're working on, that there are a few examples on their website. I think that this deck is fantastic. There are some, there are almost a few more Smith weight nods in some of the minors than I would care for, but I really, really like this deck. I have read with this deck for other people and myself, and it is just really fun, really summery. I like the color palette a lot, and I was really looking forward to this. I haven't done as much reading the book so far as I might have. I would like to read the book in its entirety, uh, but I was happy to finally have this deck in my hands after waiting for the Kickstarter with some impatience. I'm pretty good at being patient for the Kickstarters. You know, I don't really care when things are late because at this point I just kind of expect it, but I was really highly anticipating this and I'm really happy with it. And I'm really happy in general with now my Marseille collection with, you know, including the three decks that I've shown. I feel like I finally have Marseille decks that I actually like and want to use, which makes me way more enthusiastic about Marseille. So that was my most anticipated deck. Deck number four is the biggest disappointment. I have not had any disappointments with any decks that I have purchased. I haven't purchased that many decks or received that many decks in 2024, and I've been happy with what I've gotten. So the only thing that I can really think of to talk about here, and I'll put a picture, is the deck that I opened and walked through and looked at and ended up rehoming. The only one this year. All of that happened this year. And that is Tarot of the Witch's Garden. So this is a deck that I received at Reader Studio as one of the decks at the registration table when you register and pick up your your badge and things for the weekend you receive decks and this is one that we got it wasn't a deck that was really on my radar or wish list or anything like that but the cover and the, you know some of the artwork that I saw was really beautiful so I did a kind of unboxing I didn't film it um I was in my pajamas I I looked through this deck and I had and the thing that is not disappointing about this that, that I am just going to cherish as a memory is that my tarot tube friend Liz and I went through our decks at Reader Studio together and we looked through card by card and, you know, shared our commentary and had some really good laughs and just a really good time going through the cards and talking about what we thought about it and what we liked about it and what didn't work for us about it. and. Ultimately, I didn't end up keeping it, so that's why I'm putting it here for number four. As an experience, absolutely not a disappointment, but not a deck that I would use. It does have some absolutely beautiful cards that I love, but then other cards uh, that I just don't, and it, and it just doesn't feel cohesive to me. It feels like there's maybe one too many themes in there, so I didn't end up keeping that one. Number five prompt is biggest surprise. And the biggest surprise for me this year is the Forest Lore Tarot. This is a deck that wasn't really on my radar until my friend Tegan of Cosmic Creeper put it on my radar. And part of that was the fact that this was going to be going out of print, which now it is. This deck you know, I saw and looked at and, you know, I knew it wouldn't be available for too long and I do love an animal deck and so I went for it. And I am so glad that I, I did because there are so many layers of kind of knowledge and symbolism in this deck. The majors are trees and the creator very clearly knows about or knows something about the Oum because there are OM um, associations with some of these trees that are incorporated into the guidebook and done so in a, in a way that makes sense to me in terms of pairings. Like you can't layer the OM onto the major arcana really, but 
having Dar, the, the Oum is, is Oak, be on the strength card, for example, makes really good sense. So where those overlaps happen, they're really well done. I don't need the guidebook to understand why the animals were placed where they were in this deck. And these are animals from the British landscape, but a lot of them are very familiar to me living in Canada. I just, th this deck is just really a great reader. It's great to use. It's great to work with. It's springtime in terms of its colors. And, you know, a couple of times I put it away to work with something else and then it immediately just ended up coming back out again. So, so it's a surprise in that, you know, I figured that I would like it, but, but it is a surprise to me just how good this is. I knew it would be good, but how much I just click and get along with this, you know, and, and as a deck that really wasn't on my radar when it came out, this came out, I think in 2023, for it to come into my awareness, then very shortly after come into my collection, then very shortly after become a absolute go-to deck I can't put down. That makes it the biggest surprise of the year, the Forest Lore Tarot. The next prompt is Deck Crush, a deck you love. Now, <laughs> I always find the crush questions difficult. The Tarotomance tropes was not my strong point <laughs> as far as tags go. Um, and there's a lot of decks that I could put here as a deck that I love and that I love that I've received this year, but I'm going to share a deck that I love that I received this year, which is the Nine Coins Oracle by Tishan, um, whose channel is formerly Nine Coins and is now Satu Gloom, I believe. This is beautiful. This is a deck that I had on my wish list when I first saw it and as soon as I was going to do a make playing cards order I knew that this oracle would be one that that would be included and I got her other oracle um, oracle of simple space as well and this I love because it's original I find the prompts or the, the keywords really interesting titles and I really am inspired by this as a deck of the creator's own artwork, um, her own photography. As someone who is a very much amateur at this point, nature photographer, I do hope to one day make a deck with my own photography. I don't feel um, quite there yet, but I just love that as a artistic expression and as, a, as an expressive project. And I think that the, um, you know, the, the outcome is, is wonderful and it's a wonderful deck to work with. So deck that I love 2024 that came into my life in 2024, I treated myself as a birthday gift is the nine coins Oracle. Number seven is favorite tarot card. That is impossible. You all know that I am not monogamous with my favorites. I do not pick a single favorite for anything. So I've done that <laughs> for this question, but know that I don't actually have one favorite card. The card that I've decided to show here is the world card from the Mindscapes Tarot by John Rice. This is a majors only deck. And this card I chose in a reading where I shuffled and drew a card to be my card of the year. And so my card of the year is the world. And this is the card that I've chosen to keep out on my reading table. I have it in a, a little card stand, um, which was made by um, Havana of Sparkle Divine Tarot, the little um, single card holder card stand. Really good. So I'm going to be looking at this card all year. <laughs> or that's the plan anyway. I've been staring at it for the last six months and I haven't gotten sick of it. So I really like this world card that this has the three realms of, of earth, sky, and, and sea. And I just really like the composition of this card with the astrological association there. So that's what I chose for favorite tarot card, but you know I can't pick a single favorite, so 
just for the purpose of the prompt. <laughs> prompt number eight is a deck that makes you happy. Again, I chose a new deck to my collection since it's 2024, and that is the Inkwitch Tarot deck, second edition. This was not a deck that I was very aware of at all when it was originally done in its first edition, but I really like this creator's Oracle deck, the Endless Oracle, and so of course I wanted to look at his tarot deck, and I quite enjoy it. It makes me happy to use the two together, the Endless Oracle and this um, Inkwitch Tarot. I'm really looking forward to, I know he's planning to do an Endless Tarot that will more directly go with his Oracle deck, but these two go great together as well. I think the color palette is interesting. There are some unusual interpretations. This is an extra card. Um, there are a lot of extra cards in this one. So there's lots of iterations of the lover's card, for example. Um, this is one that I chose. There are a couple of different three of cups. And something that makes me happy about this, um, in addition to working with this and the Endless Oracle together, is that I ended up, and this is a blame um, Lisa Pepez thing, I ended up getting, <laughs> there's a bunch of expansion packs. And so I, I got them all. And this ended up letting me construct my own ideal version of the Inkwitch Tarot that worked out really well. So the expansions included things like uh, gender neutral versions of major arcana titles and court cards. They included um, some different imagery choices, which really gave me the fun experience, the happy experience, decks that make you happy, of customizing my deck. This world card being a tree, for example, was one of a number of choices. The tower was one of a number of choices. And having those options was really nice, especially, you know, for those few cards that, you know, one particular iteration in some cases really didn't work for me. So that makes me happy is the Inkwitch Tarot deck. And I can't wait to see what he does next, which my understanding is going to be a endless tarot. So. Prompt number nine is the most beautiful deck this year. So this is again a deck that I received this year. I don't think this deck is new out this year, but it's one that I received. This one could have also been the big surprise because it was a gift um, that I wasn't expecting. Uh, so it's one that I'm, I'm grateful for. And I chose Dirt Gems, Oracle. And this is the mass market. I know it was indie before. I like the bright color inside the box. This is a uh, plant-themed Oracle deck. I love matte edging on a deck. I love the backs. I love that the backgrounds are black and I love 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 this beautiful artwork if it will focus look at how beautiful and there are some cards in this deck that are black and white there are uh, suits in this deck but these colors this is this is my dream color palette this card. I feel like that's all of my favorite colors together in one place. So this, I think, you know, is just stunning. So this is the one that I chose to put as most beautiful deck. This year, again, it's very hard to kind of rank these things to me saying one is more beautiful than the other when the styles of these different decks are also different, but this is just amazing to me. This is the colors of my um, living room, actually. And the first reading that I did with this deck, <laughs> I cried. <laughs> I picked one card and, 
read the book and had a cry. So this is also an impactful one. The Dirt Gems Oracle, just beautiful. Question number 10 is what deck do you want by the end of the year or what deck are you still waiting on? Uh, I don't have anything that I plan on definitely getting by the end of the year. There are definitely some Kickstarters that I have my eye on or pre-order or, or decks in progress that I have my eye on that I don't know what the timelines are going to be. I'm really interested in the companion deck to the Gentle Tarot that Mari is working on, but I know that there's a delay with that one, so I'm not going to say I want it by the end of the year because I want it when it's it's ready, you know? <laughs> and then maybe that won't be by the end of the year and that's fine. Uh, I... Yeah, there's not there's not anything that I'm very, very set on by the end of the year. The one that I'm waiting on that I backed on Kickstarter is the Solus Socasa Lux Bromalis by Usi. I am not sure what the final timeline is on that one. I know there's going to be a bit of a delay. It is, you know, based on how they're making the artwork, I figured there would be. It's a very um, laborious by hand kind of process. So... I will look forward to that one, you know, whenever it comes. I do expect it by the end of the year. I'm also waiting on the new night walking themed book to go with the deck for wonder walking. I already have the deck, but I did back that campaign for the book, which I expect to have this year. So that's what is coming to me. Question number 11 is which deck hasn't been used yet, but that you want to work with this year? So I don't, I don't acquire decks and then leave them sitting in their packaging never used. <laughs> um, I tend to want to work with something when it comes. So there isn't a deck on my shelf that like has never ever been used. But decks that I want to work with this year. Um, I have been working with the past couple of weeks Nellie's deck by um, Kelly Fitzgerald. This is a hybrid tarot, oracle, playing cards, Lenormand mashup. Cardomancy style deck. I love this deck. I love reading with this deck. This deck is not new this year, but Kelly is currently rerunning the Nellie's uh, class, which covers kind of how the system works combining all of these different that's, that's Kelly's dog. <laughs> um, so, so I've been, I had been waiting. I had been waiting to work with this and now I have been. What I haven't used yet that is new this year that I want to work with though <laughs> is the little baby version. So these are it's the exact same. It's just smaller. Uh, these were made with the thought of someone might want to do a grand tableau with this deck, which is not something that I've ever really done, but it's something that I would give a go. So I want to work with this this year. I haven't used it yet this year. I have, um, you know, played around with it and that and kind of laid some cards out, but I haven't really done readings with this yet. So that's the best answer that I have. Um, I don't have anything kind of sitting in the cellophane um, that I'm hoping to use because that just doesn't, that just doesn't happen in my house. <laughs> and the last question is number 12, the favorite video that you've made. I don't know. I don't know what I would pick for my favorite video that I've made. Uh, I would say I'm really having fun doing um, top tarot trumps VRs to Masha over at Musings by Masha. There isn't one of those that really stands out to me as my favorite one, but I'm just kind of enjoying the process of that tag that keeps on giving. I had fun doing the occult tea tag VR. I think that that one just had a lot of really substantive questions to think about and talk about in ways that I really appreciate that doesn't always happen. So 
you know, in terms of favorite videos, that's one that I really enjoyed thinking about and making. I also really enjoyed making my video comparing books and decks as a kind of VR to tarot shrink. So those I would say are the, the videos that I had the most fun making. Um, I don't know about like favorite in terms of outcome, definitely probably not the most watched, but those are the ones that I had the most fun with. That's my mid-year tarot tag check-in. Thank you to Chanel for starting this tag and continuing it this year. I've really been enjoying seeing other folks VRs and look forward to seeing more. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. I'll see you soon. Bye.